Hey everyone, this is uh, Pastor Brian Ross from Grace Life Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm coming to you with another video here in my series about my book, The King James Bible in America, an Orthographic Historical and Textual Investigation. This book can be ordered directly offline from the publisher here at this website at, at uh, dispensationalpublishinghouse.com. And uh, here is a copy of the book. The book has uh, recently been critiqued by Pastor uh, Brother Rodney in Connecticut, and this is the fifth study in this series of me going through and breaking down um, Rodney's videos and explaining some things and uh, trying to address what I believe are mischaracterizations and misinformation uh, that are shared uh, that were shared by Brother Rodney. Let me say again, I understand that when you write a book, you are opening yourself up to uh, potential uh, scorn, ridicule, I don't know, whatever word you want to use for it, and you take that on yourself when you do that. Um, I love and appreciate Brother Rodney as a member of the body of Christ, as a fellow King James Bible believer, and a right Pauline rightly divider. And so, uh, again, I just want to uh, make that clear at the outset. However, there are some things that are said in the videos that I think need to be answered and addressed, and that's what these videos have been about. The first video I touched on why I wrote the book, The King James Bible in America, because of some research and some things I saw about the printed history of the text in the United States. In the second video, I, dre I addressed the uh, fallacy of false dichotomy that Rodney uh, established and put myself and anybody that agreed with my book in the same category as James White and Dan Wallace. In the third video, I address what Rodney had to say about the preface and the translators. And in the last video, we looked at what Rodney had to say about all way and all ways. So in this video, we want to pick up in the section where Rodney starts talking about end sample and example. And again, the, pur the purpose of Rodney's video is to demonstrate that what I argue in the King James Bible in America is false and that all way and all ways are not spelling variants, but that they are wholly different words of discriminated meaning. And let's just jump right in and see what um, Rodney had to say about this. Now, the next words that we'll look at are in sample and example. And again, you know, Brian said they're the same, and all the dictionaries he showed, they're the same thing, and they, they don't see any difference in all that, right? Well, let me put the slide up there. This is a picture of the inside of the Oxford English Dictionary. Notice that in sample is a precedent which may be followed or imitated, a pattern or model of conduct and then shows you in the King James Bible some examples right in the Oxford English Dictionary of where and that's not even what's in question here really and I'm gonna explain that in a minute but in the Webster's 1828 when you look up example there's a whole list of meanings for the word example which which can be used as in sample. No, no one can deny that. But, but here's the thing. In your King James Bible, in sample. So I want to first show you what Rodney's talking about here. Okay, whoops, got the wrong definition. If I type in and sample into the Oxford English Dictionary, and apparently I'm having a slow internet problem. So here's an example, okay? An example, a pattern, a model for imitation. Exactly what the Oxford English Dictionary just showed. And sample, to show by example, this word is seldom used either as a noun or a verb, see example. So this dictionary is telling you to see example. If I click on that and we go to it and we look now at example, we can see that there are eight different definitions and that we could see that example could be either, it could be a pattern, a copy, a model. It could be all of these different things, okay? So what Rodney just said about the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, this is what he's talking about. So it could mean any of these things, all right? Any of these eight things, but 
example and end sample mean the same thing, carry the same meanings according to what the dictionary is saying here. Okay, so let's go back and continue. Is always and only used in connection with demonstrating the character of people as a pattern that you should follow and never, never of objects. And for some reason, this seems to be difficult for those who want to believe that these words are the same. So we're going to look at these things, okay? Okay, so I want to stop it there and just comment on this. So this is the same thing that Scott Ray said in his video um, of a few months ago. And he says here about, we've looked at this already about uh, end sample, but down here he talks about example. And the contention here is that um, an end sample never refers to anything other than the character of a person, okay? And Rodney here has the Oxford English Dictionary open, and he's talking about this out of the OED. So let's go look at the OED, all right? So here is the definition. This is in the uh, subscriber side to the OED. And notice it's got the different forms of the words. It has the historical origin of the word. Notice that it's telling you to see example. And it's talking about the origin of the word and where, you know, where it came from and so on. But then look, it says equals example in various sentence sentence or various senses, excuse me, the modern anachronistic use is almost wholly due to reminiscent of passages in which the word occurs in the New Testament. So the only thing that's keeping the um, word and sample in modern usage really is its occurrences within the King James Bible. OK, so notice what it says here, though. All right. That's what it says. It says that it, they equ it equals example. That's what the dictionary says. All right. Now, let's look at the version of the OED that Rodney is sharing on his screen. He has focused your attention right here on a precedent which may be followed or imitated, a pattern or a model of conduct. That's what you see right here in yellow on Rodney's screen. So that is what he is highlighting. All right. In a minute, he's going to talk about number three, a deterrent instance of punishment or evil consequences of any course of conduct a practical warning, okay? But notice at the top, in the very entry that Rodney has in front of him, he does not show you this, that it and sample equals example in various senses, and that the only way that, the only thing that's keeping them in usage is, is the occurrences of and sample in the King James Bible, or in the, in the Bible, in the New Testament. So if it weren't for these words being in a King James Bible in the New Testament, they, they literally would not be, used. All right. Now, notice again, it says, uh, see example. So this dictionary is saying, just like the Webster's 1828 dictionary, the very dictionary that Rodney is using here in this video is saying that these two words equal the same thing. All right. Now, he's saying also that end sample always refers to the a person's character and that it, in the King James Bible, and that it can never refer to anything else. So there's a lot of stuff that is said there uh, and some implications there. Let's go back to the video and pick up with what Rodney said. Okay. So in Philippians chapter 3, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded god shall reveal this unto you 316 nevertheless whereto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as walk so which walk like me as ye have us for an example now if you can't see that in the context of these verses paul is talking about the character of men and a pattern that should be followed i'll say like brother larry tidwell says all the time i can't help you 
I can't help you. You know, brother, brother Larry. So <clears throat> Rodney's using Philippians three here to say that in sample always and only is referring to the character of a person. All right. So what about example? Is example ever used in this sense? Is example ever used in the sense of talking about the character of a person? Well, let's look if we could at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let's check this out here, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Notice what it says. It says, let, this was Paul talking to Timothy. It says, let no man despise thy, despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and purity. So is Paul not here talking about Timothy's character? Is he not talking about the character of Timothy as far as him being a, a pattern, an example for other people? in terms of word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith, purity, etc. Okay. So, and sample is used in that way, but so is example. And the reason that they're both used that way is because guess what? They both mean the same thing. So if I come over here now and we load up the definition for example, guess what we're going to find out? We're going to find out that one of the definitions for example is a person's conduct practice regarded as an object of imitation or as an influence on the behavior of others, a model adorn, uh, afforded or set by this. So this is one of the definitions of the word example. More generally, the action or behavior especially considered con uh, commendable or worthy of imitation. So example can mean and does mean the exact same thing as the second definition of end sample that Rodney has pinned on the screen. So the King James translators use both words, example and end sample, to refer to the character of a person. And if we come over here and we look at the version of the OED that Rodney is using, now you need to pay attention. Rodney does not show you the definition of example. He never shows you the definition of example. He's only going to show you the definition, one definite or two definitions of end sample, and he never goes to the entry for example. Now, why might that be? Rodney is arguing in the video that they are wholly different words and that they don't mean the same thing. But when you actually look at the definition, he, he, I already showed you that for end sample, he didn't show you where it says equals example in various senses. Look at this example. So this is from the same, the same edition of the OED that Rodney is showing on the screen. He never saw, he never shows example. I'm just going to skip all this. The main English senses are derived from Latin through French. In the arrangement below, the presumed logical order has been adopted in preference to the order in which the senses are recorded in English. See also S sample, N sample, sample, look at this, which, ultimate, which are ultimately the same word. The very dictionary that Rodney is using to try to disprove what I'm arguing in the book, the King James Bible in America, explicitly says, explicitly says that the two words are the same word. See also a sample and sample sample, which are ultimately the same word. Now, that means the, these words are spelling variants, exactly what I argued in the book. They are not wholly different words of discriminated meaning. They are spelling variants of the same word, and the dictionary is telling you this right here, okay? Now, at this point, I mean, I don't know how much more evidence that we need to demonstrate to show this, but apparently we, you know, we need to keep going. The Edward Phillips New World of Words Dictionary. This is the Edward Phillips New World of Words Dictionary from 1658. So within 50 years of the King James Bible, and here is the entry for and sample. Notice what it says. So this is the actual dictionary from 1658. End sample, old world, an example, model, or pattern. That's Edward Phillips New World of Worlds, 1658. Well, what about the uh, Noah Bailey's 1721. Noah Bailey's seven. Uh, if I can get it to load here, come on.
it's giving me trouble. There it is. So we got, come on. So you can all laugh at my technical problems. You can see right here, if I can get this thing to cooperate. Anyway, I guess I'm just going to have to hover over this. But you can see there um, on the left-hand column, you can see there on the left-hand column, with zoomed in, and it says that end sample is an example or a pattern. So dictionaries going all the way back to 1658 to 1721, they are all saying that these words mean the same thing, okay? The Oxford English Dictionary, the very dictionary that Rodney is using, is very clear on example that they that end sample and example are ultimately the same word. If you look at the online entomological dictionary that traces the um, historical development of words and sample, a precedent to be followed, illustrative instant, instance, a pattern, a model, circa 1300 variant, a sample from Old English, a sample, example. The survival of the variant form is due to its use in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3. The um, Middle English Dictionary is going to say the same thing. So I have to say again, at what point are we going to follow the evidence? All right. The King James Bible uses end sample and example interchangeably to talk about the, a pattern or, or rule of conduct because the words mean the same thing. They are simply spelling variants. Kidwell says he sends my bird's eye view of the Bible to everybody that, that he wants to listen. That's the only thing he'll send out. And when he gives it to them, he says, this is going to explain to you how your Bible is divided. And if you can't understand this video, I can't help you. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Brother Larry Tidwell says all the time. So Okay, now notice also. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, live ungodly. Now, this seems to be something different than in Sable, doesn't it? Right? Let me show you another shot of the Oxford. So that uh, that glitch there, that was in the in Rodney's video. That was not something that I did. Um, there's a little skip there for some reason uh, in the video. So what he's got up here now is definition number three. So let's go, let's go back here and check this out. So what he's got up there now is definition number three from the OED's entry on in sample, a deterrent instance of punishment or of evil consequences or of course of conduct, a practical warning. Okay. So that's what he's got up here now. For the English dictionary. Notice that it's an sample is also a deterrent, a deterrent instant of punishment or of evil consequences of any course of conduct. A practical warning. Isn't that what you find in these verses? Isn't that what you find here? A warning? Don't you? <clears throat> so Rodney has the definition here for end sample. And he's got number three. It talks about a deterrent instance of punishment. So again, that's this definition um, right here, number three. And let's go look at example. Look at number three: a signal of a signal instance of punishment intended to have a deterrent effect, warning, warning, caution. A person whose fate serves as a deterrent to others. Again, the words mean the same thing. Okay, 
Um, I'll show you an example here in a minute that Sodom and Gomorrah is described in the Bible as both an end sample and as an example, because they mean the same thing. The definitions that are in the dictionaries that Brian say they mean the same thing don't mean the same thing. The, the definitions are there. And that's what I don't understand is how he could say all the dictionaries say they all mean the same thing. I'm just showing you right now. I just showed you that Rodney is not showing you the whole story. The dictionaries absolutely say, going all the way back to 1651, the oldest, 1658, the oldest dictionaries that I can find. All of the evidence on any platform demonstrates that these words are similar, that they mean the same thing and that they're spelling variants. The very dictionary that Rodney himself is using says that they are the same word. So if I'm watching Rodney's video and I'm just trusting the information that Rodney's giving out here, um, I would be writing Rodney at this point and asking him why he... Um, hasn't been forthcoming with the evidence. So he's in the process of criticizing me for saying that the dictionary says that the words mean the same thing. He selectively picks what he wants you to see from the dictionary. He doesn't give you all of the information while he's in the process of ridiculing me. No, they don't. And they're not saying it. They're telling you exactly what the words mean in the King James Bible. Now, to be honest with you, you wouldn't even need a dictionary to see these obvious meanings. Would you? Okay, then then what about um what about and samples plural? First Corinthians chapter ten. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand neither let us tempt christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer now all these things happened what things fornication uh murmuring all these things happened unto them for in samples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world I come are are come. Now, again, there's character here, a pattern that should be followed, and also a warning, as we found in the Oxford English Dictionary. Now, I know that someone's chomping at the bit right now because verse six, verse six uses the word example. So let's look at that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 5 and 6. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things, same things, the, the lusting and all, the murmuring and all that. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So now the word example is used to identify the same thing as in sample. But did we not honestly say that the word example is used? Like this example right here, Hebrews chapter 8. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man... So again, we see this argument about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So just want to remind you about a couple things. So the first occurrence of any form of N sample singular or N samples plural is found in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 10, verse 11. All right. Ronnie just showed you in that same chapter in verse six, you have the occurrence of the word um, examples. If you go back to my third video in this series, you will see that these are the same Greek word. This is a textual fact. You cannot explain this away. You cannot sweep this under the rug. It's a fact. They are a translation of the same Greek word, all right? 
Um, we cannot say that the preserved group, we cannot pick and choose when we decide the preserved Greek matters. This is exactly the examples that the translators set up in the preface of how they said they were going to handle things. Okay, I dealt with all that in uh, the third video, but I do want to remind you about the notes of John Boyce translating for King James. Just going to review this quickly. So these are the notes of a translator who sat in on the final process between 1610, 1610 and 1611 on the translation process of the King James. He comments on chapter, he comments right here on 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, the first occurrence of N sample, it, of any form of N sample in the King James Bible. All right. And then here is what he said about it. And I already covered this, so I'm just going to remind you. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, that the thought might, that the thought may be completed. Read thus. These things as our examples happen to them. A.D. is Anthony Downs, sharply and violently exerted himself beyond measure for the interpretation of Augustine. That is that the examples were understood as concerning types and figures. So they ultimately reject the, tra the uh, interpretation of Augustine. But twice in this, um, John Boyce uses the word examples twice in his notes covering the final revision to comment on a verse where the King James translators had end samples in the text. He sees no difference between them. And again, he says that the thought may be completed. So he's talking about completing the thought that started in verse six. Okay, so let's look at this. My internet is slow a little bit today, so I apologize for that. But in verse six, now these things were our examples uh, verse 11, now these things happened unto them for and samples. The Greek words are the same, all right? If I turn on the Strong's here, you guys can see very plainly that the two words are coming from the same Greek word. So here is example. Example is coming from uh, 5179. And here is end samples is coming from 5179. So the translators believed that verse 11 is completing the thought in verse 6. The Greek words are the same in both cases. This is a textual fact in the preserved text. And in one verse, they say examples. In another verse, they say and samples. And the King James translator in his own notes uses examples interchangeably with and samples. The dictionaries all say they mean the same thing. They are translations from the same Greek word, all right? I'm going to turn off the Strong's, and I want to make another point here, all right? So the first occurrence of any form of N samples, of N samples singular or N samples plural, occurs in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now, in Rodney's own videos from, let's scroll down here, in his own videos from August 20th and August 27th, where he's talking about the built-in dictionary, he talks about the law of first mention and the law of near and remote context when he's talking about the built-in dictionary. Gail Ripplinger, in her book on the built-in dictionary, The Language of the King James Bible, she gives tips for locating this hidden built-in dictionary. I have to say, I still am a little puzzled how she's discovered a hidden a dictionary that's hidden. But anyway, uh, look at it says, look at the word next to the word. Look at the word in the verse. Look at the word in the preceding verse. Read, uh, read beginning at the paragraph mark or the entire chapter. So if I'm going to apply the same reasoning for the built-in dictionary, the first occurrence of a form of end sample occurs in the same context as, a, as examples, talking about what happened to Israel in the wilderness in time past. So using that methodology, why does that methodology not point to exactly what the dictionary says, that these two words are spelling variants and that they mean the same thing? So whether you want to look at the dictionaries, whether you want to look at the Greek, uh, the, 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 the same Greek word, whether you want to look at the notes of John Boyce, every piece of objective evidence that we can present demonstrates that these words mean the same thing, that they are spelling variants 
and that there is no substantive difference in meaning between end sample and example, exactly what I argued in the King James Bible in America. Man have somewhat also to offer. Now we're talking about sacrifices, right? Talking about gifts. Verse 4. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Now here's example used precisely the way example is used but you'll never see and sample used in this kind of with objects and things like this okay yeah, this is something physical uh, again i'm not totally sure what um what rodney is is driving at there especially when you look at the fact that and sample is used, and example and example are both used in reference to what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah. So, um, and you can you can look this up. So, um, let me just find it here. So, here's first here's Second Peter chapter two verse six. It talks about uh, the turning of the cities and turning to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, into ashes. Them them talking about people um, and the city itself them with an overthrow making them an ensample unto those uh unto those after that should should live uh ungodly so if we go to the tools here for this verse and we come down here and we find end sample and we click on that and we load this up and we come down here we are going to see Oops, that's the wrong verse. I apologize on that. Um, let me find it. Just give me a second. Okay, here's the verse I wanted. We just looked at the verse in 2 Peter, Jude 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for what? An example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So there's another, another instance where one place, Second Peter, they use end sample. Here they use example, and they're talking about the same thing. So are we going to go with the objective facts and evidence, or are we going to take what Scott Ray argues for here, where he says, if you listen to certain other people who think they got to go to the Greek or their Oxford English Dictionary, which, again, I find to be a fascinating thing that Rodney is doing that in this video, they are going to tell you the wrong definitions. I use my King James Bible, stayed with the context, and I derive my own definitions for the words. In my video from, in my video, through uh, thoughts on recent discussions about the words end sample and example, I demonstrated four different King James advocates using the methodology identified by Scott Ray, coming up with four different definitions. So which is it? Are we supposed to use the Oxford English Dictionary? Is that going to give us the right information or isn't it? Which was the contention early on in this discussion that it, the, the dictionary is wrong and it's not going to give you the right information. Or is the dictionary pertinent when it's selectively applied? Or do we need all of the objective evidence to be able to make a decision? And to say, as I've heard others say, well, the, the, their words mean the same thing in the dictionary, but not in the Bible, to me, is extremely, my that makes my skin crawl, because what that's saying then is words can take on meanings contrary to what they can historically been proven to mean in the English language, simply because they are in a King James Bible. Is that really the position that we want to be adopting as King James advocates? Not not this King James advocate. I'm going to go with the facts and the evidence in multiple categories. And, and I, that's where I am going to remain. So let's listen to the rest of what Rodney said about this. These are things that you're handling. And that's not having to do with character as a pattern for you to emulate in your life. 
This is about things. Okay. But I've already showed you the example, no pun intended, from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, where the word example is used about Timothy's character, not about things. So this arbitrary distinction that is being contextually derived through a selective application of the dictionary doesn't work. About objects. Okay. Here's another example of example. John 13, 14. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done. What's he talking about? Why, why is the word example there and not in sample? Because there's water here. There's washing of feet here. Okay, He gave them an example. Why is the word example in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, if there's no object present, but it's Timothy's character that Paul is addressing? Example to wash each other's feet. That's not an example of character or a pattern to be followed or emulated. That's has to do with something they can touch, something they can feel, right? That's why the King James translators did not use the word ensample here. It had to do with physical acts, not something associated. So again, what about the first Timothy chapter 412? Rodney seems to know why the translators are making these discriminated choices that he's arguing for while he's saying that no man alive knows why they made these choices. So I would say to everybody watching this, are we going to go with the documentable objective notes of a translator where he's using the two words interchangeably in his notes with a, a text where they had end sample and then saying that verse 11, 1 Corinthians 10, 11 completes the thought? which is the obvious case. I don't understand why this is even really such a problem for folks other than it's what I'm saying in the book is contrary to what folks have his traditionally said. And I say traditionally on purpose because there are some traditions here that my book is sort of kicking against on some things and some ways that folks have always said things, but do not accord with the facts. ...with character or, or a pattern of humility. Now, here's an, an, an example of ensample. Let me show you an ensample, an ensample that you should follow and emulate and allow to be the pattern of your life. Notice in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Excuse me. <clears throat> wow. And power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia for, what kind of examples were they? For from, out, from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is, is spread abroad. So that we not need to speak, uh, speak anything. I can't see the anything there. It's cut off. But what an unbelievable, an unbelievably beautiful ensample for you to follow and pattern your life after. That from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Amen. It's completely different, isn't it? Notice uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint but willingly, not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, 
but being in samples and samples to the flock. What a beautiful ensample for the little flock to have. I mean, listen, greed, greed is rampant in Christendom today. I mean, according to the school of higher learning that so many people are part of, they're a part of this. You know, they'll say that since and sample is archaic and no longer in use, it should just be changed to example and leave it at that. I wholeheartedly disagree with that, with that kind of thinking. I, only, I honestly believe that this kind of thinking crept in unawares into the ranks of biblical Christianity as an attack against the superiority and the majesty and the transcendence of our King James Bible. And look, okay, I'm trying to say this in a nice way. When I, when I, when I read Brian's book, I'm going to stop it there because I want to address uh, what he's going to get into uh, next in another video. So my point in the King James Bible in America is number one, and sample and example mean the same thing. Okay. They're from the same Greek word. The dictionaries say they mean the same thing. Here is and sample equals example in various senses. I've showed you the evidence. If you look at example, the very dictionaries that Rodney are using, see also S sample, N sample, sample, which are all ultimately the same word. They all are saying that they mean the same thing. The notes of John Boyce, the notes of John Boyce are saying that they mean the same thing. He uses them interchangeably. The law of first mention and the laws of near and remote context if applied the way the advocates of that view use the argumentation, say and suggest that they mean the same thing. Why does this matter? Because in American printings of the King James Bible, as early as 1792, American printers were, were spelling the words in their American form. Between 1800 and 1850, millions of, millions of King James Bibles were printed by the American Bible Society and sent all around the world by American missionaries. If, if, if King James advocates are going to persist in this idea that these are wholly different words and that they're corruptions, they are going to logically, logically have to say that all of those King James Bibles, all of those Bibles that were read by our forebears, in a time period and in a generation that knew nothing about the textual and translational debates that we are having today in the 20th and 21st century, that all of those are illegitimate and that those people never had God's word in English unless they had an Oxford or a Cambridge printing when there is zero evidence from the time period under discussion that those people ever had that thought. I, for one, am not willing to adopt a position that would deprive all of those people of Bibles and the, the promise of preservation just because they spell some words differently. And sample and example are ultimately the same word. John Boyce knew it. The writers of old dictionaries knew it, yet we have a tradition that a lot of folks are struggling to let go of that doesn't make sense. So Rodney's video, in my mind, falls short of its, that segment falls short of its goal. There's a misuse of the dictionary, there's a selective use of the dictionary, then a selective application of the dictionary, and we either are going to stake our claim on objective evidence or ultimate subjectivity that people can derive their own definitions for words based upon where they are at in a King James Bible. Now, that's, that's really the options. So I will close off with this fifth video in this series. 
And next time we will talk about establish, establish, I believe. Thanks for listening. <laughs>